الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر صدق الله العظيم Only some time back We were saying the month of Ramadan is fast approaching Prepare for it, let's prepare for it, let's do something the month of Ramadan is coming and here we find our souls heading towards the end of the month of Ramadan so quickly that it seems the month is not does not consist of 30 days anymore it goes so fast and here we can see how our life, the whole life is just going so fast. As these days are fast of passing, each and every day we are getting closer to our final destination. We are on a journey right now. We all are traveling. And we all are heading towards a destination. When we forget the time, the time doesn't forget us. It keeps on taking us. This train never stops. How many breaths the person will take in his life, even that is being counted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's fixed. How much food the person will consume in his life, how much water the person will consume, what other things in the world the person will use, all of these things have been fixed for all of us. We can't take a single sip, single drop of water more than what have been fixed for us. And we can't take single breath more than what has been assigned for us. All of these things have already been determined. And we can make no changes into these things. And as this time is passing so fast and so quickly, we can find ourselves heading very quickly towards our final destination. مِنْهَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ We created you from this dust, we will put you back into the same dust. وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَى We will bring you back from the same dust. Our main home is not in this world. No one came as a permanent resident into this world. When we call it permanent resident, no one normally refers to more than 60, 70 years. They give you a residency of a country, that you are a permanent resident, but might be permanent under the ground, not above the ground. The permanent residence for all of us is in another world. 
We came from there. We have to go back to our home. We were never in this world forever. We came only some time back, all of us. Some of us 40 years back, some of us 50 years back, some of us 60 years back. And accordingly, we will be leaving and going back to our main place, where we belong to. If anyone was to live in this world forever, it would have been Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam. So that people will keep on benefiting from them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not even make that rule for Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam. So we have to realize the life is very short. And with this short life, it passes very fast. And this is not our home. We don't want to prepare for this station. We are just in a train. We are in a plane. And this plane is really flying very fast, getting us to our final destination. And each and every moment is passing, is getting us closer to our destination. <coughs> Even when we are sleeping, we think that we are out. We are not doing anything. As I said, we may forget the time. The time doesn't forget us. It's still getting us closer to our destination. The people of Kahf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those days gave people long lives. When these people came into the deen of Allah, <coughs> And they had to go through a lot of hardships if they would live amongst people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them go into a cave. In that cave, these people had to spend more than 300 years. Those many years of their life was remaining. And they had to spend it in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them go to a deep sleep. And they slept for 900 years, according to the solar, the solar calendar, and nine, uh, 300 years, and 309 years, according to the lunar calendar. وَلَبِثُوا فِي كَهْفِهِمْ ثَلَاثَ مِئَةٍ سِنِينَ وَازْدَادُوا تِسْعَى How beautifully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts it to accommodate both the calendars that they lived in their cave for 300 years plus 9. This is how Allah says. He doesn't say 309 years. 300 years plus 9. Which means, you take it according to the solar calendar, it's 300 years according to the lunar calendar, 309 years. But throughout that 309 years, as these people are sleeping, the time is still taking them closer to their destination. And finally, now is their time to die. They wake up, looking for food. They're hungry now, looking for food. But it was their time to go back to the main place where they were supposed to go to. And one by one, they started dying. And this is how all of us are getting there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once he was thinking about the long lives of the previous ummahs and the short life that this ummah has, so he started weeping. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why are you weeping here, Muhammad? He says, because when I look at the short lives of my ummah, they will have a very little opportunity of doing good deeds. They won't have too much time. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, A'maru ummati ma bayna sittina ila sab'in. The ages of this ummah is between 60 to 70 years. That's the normal age of this ummah. How much can we do within these 60 to 70 years? Say if there are 70 years that we will get of our life. 
before a child will get to the age where he would understand what ibadah is all about, <coughs> about 12 to 15 years are gone. And many of us, before we wake up and we get back into our, the real track of our life, it takes us some more years after the age of puberty. And I don't know if some of you are surprised when I say some years because it takes so many times, it takes a lot of years. I asked one of the brothers some time back, I was on a journey, I asked a brother, how is your son doing? He is okay, but you know, people get the right understanding at the age of 40, then I hope inshallah he will come towards thee. So he said, I'm waiting until he will get... 40 years, then he will come back towards the what can I do now? So if we look at our souls, how long it takes us to come towards the deen, and then how many years are left from the 70? Hardly we get 20, 30 years to do an ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then it's our time to go. And as we get, we start stepping into the old age. As the person gets closer to his 60 and his 60s, now most of the things that he was able to do before is not able to do it anymore. So all of our ibadahs have been cut down at that time. A lot of problems, a lot of health problems that don't allow us to do many of our ibadahs. Many people cannot fast. Many people cannot stand up for salah. Many people cannot stand up for too long. Many people cannot do a lot of rak'ahs. Many people cannot recite too much because they get headache. And with all of these things, so that time is also gone. So just think how many years we have. As we calculate for everything else in our life, let's calculate for our ibadah also. And see how much time do we really get. And if we look at it, Really all of us will be just rushing towards these ibadahs that since I have the opportunity, walhamdulillah, and this is the age that I'm able to walk freely, walhamdulillah, without needing the help of anyone. And I'm, alhamdulillah, able to perform a lot of things that other older people are not able to perform it. I, be, I better grab the opportunity and do whatever I can at this time. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was crying. That with the short time that the Ummah has, how much can they do? And looking at the long lives of the previous Ummahs, simply means that these people have done a lot, much more than us. Some of the Ummahs are having 400, 500 years of their lives. Some of them are close to 1,000 years in the, of their lives. And if we compare it with our souls, which is about 60, 70, 70 years of our lives, and as we look at it, that out of the 60, 70 years, about 30 years are just gone like this. Hardly we get good 30 years of doing the proper ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we use those 30 years properly. If we make the right use of the time. And for these 30 years, we are trying to buy Jannah. We are trying to buy eternal pleasure in the Akhirah. We are trying to get something that will that is endless, that will never end. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, Ala inna sil'atallahi ghaliya. Remember, the merchandise that Allah has to offer you people is very expensive. Ala inna sil'at Allah al-Jannah. The merchandise that Allah is offering you to buy is Jannah. This is the Jannah that we are trying to buy. It's not cheap. It's very expensive. And there isn't anything in the world that can pay for it. The only thing that can pay for it is a deed of a human being where he tries to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we spend the whole world and whatever it contains, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can throw it into the other side of it and will tell us, I don't want none of these things. None of this is acceptable by me. Look at the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he says, he tells us the value of the, gen- of the whole world to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَوْ كَانَتِ الدُّنْيَا تَعْدِلُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ جَنَاحَ بَعُوضَةِ مَا سَقَى كَافِرًا مِنْهَا شَرْبَةً مَا If the world had value, even as much as a wing of a mosquito, he would not have given a kafir even a single sip of water. He said, the whole world doesn't value to me even as much as a wing of a mosquito to you people. How do we value the wing of a mosquito? The world doesn't value to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even that much. Of course, if we study the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will realize that this example is only for us to understand. Otherwise, what does the wing of a mosquito mean to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Even the whole world has no value even to a wing of a mosquito to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing closer to that. Sometimes to us a wing of a mosquito might be more valuable than the whole world is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what does this hadith mean when you look at it? Try to analyze the hadith that doesn't even value as much as the wing of a mosquito. Subhanallah. Whatever is in the world, take the whole world, each and every country in the world. Each and every country in the world is just a piece of that a wing of a mosquito that you can break of it. This is how countries are divided from that wing of a mosquito. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he looked at this, that those people having such long lives, my ummah having such a short life, so he started weeping. Simply means my ummah will be behind the other ummahs to enter the Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he saw the cry of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he sent Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam with the surah of Quran al kareem that we have just recited. Surah Al-Qadr, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul Al-Qadr. Wama adraka ma laylatul Al-Qadr. Laylatul Al-Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. Oh Muhammad, I have taken care of this ummah even before you cried for them. Oh Muhammad, I am very merciful to this ummah. And I have given them this night before I sent you. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul Al-Qadr. The time when I started reading the Qur'an, it was the night of Qadr. I gave them that night as the Ummah started. As soon as you started getting the revelation, that night was assigned for this Ummah. It wasn't there before the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It wasn't there for the previous Ummahs. It came with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil Qadr. I fixed the night. Just the night I sent the Qur'an to you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I called it the night of Qadr, the night of value. And what does this mean? What is Laylatul Qadr? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself explains, Al khayrun min alfi shahr, better than thousand months. One night, better than thousand months. Our lifespan is very short. As we have only about 60 to 70 years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a night which is value, which well use more than 80, year, 80 years of our life. Khayrun min alfi shahr. Better than thousand months. So the ibadah of one night will get us the reward of more than 80 years of our lives. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with this night. Two rak'ah. You perform two rak'ah during that night. It's just like you have done the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for more than 80 years of your, of your life. We can never get the reward of 80 years in our lives because we lose most of the time. And hardly we get 80 years to live. But this one night will give us the reward of all of that time. Khayrun min alfi shahr. Better than thousand months. How much better? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not specify that. 
That all depends according to how much value we have for it and how we use it. Now that will depend from person to person. For some people, might be little better than thousand months. For some other people, might be thousands of months that they get during one night. Just like what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about Sahaba Ridwan Allahi alayhi wa that if they spend handful of wheat, they get so much reward that we cannot get that reward by spending a mountain of gold because of their ikhlas, their sincerity for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their closeness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named it Laylatul Qadr, the night of value, so that he would tell us if you have the value of it, then it has the value. And if you don't have the value of it, and we lose it like any other night of our lives, then of course it has no value to those people. It's the night, if we really have the value of it, if we know what does Laylatul Qadr means to us, and if we look at this ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing us with during this night, people will not be able to sleep even if they try. <coughs> they won't be able to go to their bed even if they f are forcing themselves to go to be their bed. It's such a great blessing of Allah that normally when even we think about it, we think 80 years, uh, more than 80 years in one, in one day, in one night, that seems too much. Let me just go to sleep. I don't think any person will get that much. Any person will give that much. But really, look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's raham. His mercy. His kareem. He keeps on giving and he wants to give and he'll keep, he likes to give. It's only we don't want to take it. Subhanallah. After knowing this value in the Quran al kareem in the ayahs of the Quran al kareem imagine what if a person will lose this thing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, it's a night that has so much value that every person gets the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whoever tries during that night, wala yuhramu khayruha illa mahroom. And a really unfortunate person is the one who will lose the blessing of this night. Otherwise, every person will try to use it. Compare it with our worldly gain that we normally work for day and night. If we know that there is a day, if we work during that day, our income will be more than what we can earn in over 80 years. Say if we find that thing out. We know that sometimes there are sales and they keep some limit to the sale that you can come, those only for those who would come between 8 and 10 in the morning. And you will find a long line before 8 o'clock. Everyone wants to save money. Everyone wants to get more valuable thing by spending less. Here we are spending so less. <clears throat> we are spending only a few nights. Mainly is one of the nights. But with this we get some more nights to try to get that night. Hardly we will spend 10 nights. That's the maximum we will spend if we do. And by spending these 10 nights, we are getting something that we cannot earn it throughout our life. We cannot earn it in 80 years of our lives. It is a fact. If it was a worldly gain, believe me, we all will be rushing to it. We'll put everything on the side. That I can earn in one day more than what I can earn in 80 years. <coughs> Why to leave it? Just a sale where buy one, get another free, we all run to it. Save 30%, save 50% and we are all there. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is opening the doors of his rahmah. He just wants to give. As we find in this, by looking at this, that he just wants to give. He wants to give out his reward so that we will have a lot of reward. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cried to get us this night. And if we just lose it by sleeping during these nights also, then we are really losers. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, Ya Rasulullah, when is Laylatul Qadr? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, It can be in any of the odd nights of the last 10 days of Ramadan, starting from the 21st. And it might be the last night of Ramadan. So in other words, he's telling us the possibility of it being in one of the six nights of Ramadan, 21st, 3rd, 5th, 27th, 29th, and the last night of Ramadan, if it, is, if, ha if it has 30 days of Ramadan. These are the nights where we have the possibility of getting the month of Ramadan. But the last 10 days by themselves are very important. So inshallah, for those of us who can use the whole last 10 days of Ramadan, day and night, do it, use it in the maximum ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the best choice. If not, at least the odd nights of these last 10 days of Ramadan, which will be 21st night of Ramadan, will be the night between Monday and Tuesday, this coming Monday and Tuesday. And here we find ourselves just getting towards the end of Ramadan. One of the other things, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by Aisha radiallahu anha, Ya Rasulullah, if I know which night is Laylatul Qadr, is there any special dua that I should recite or I should make during that night? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said yes. During that night, make this dua. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. Ya Allah, you are the forgiving one. You love to forgive. Tuhibbul afwa. You love to forgive. Forgive us. Simply means, try to get the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this night. And do as much ibadah as of course as possible. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan, he hardly used to sleep day and night. Day and night he is busy in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we know, throughout his life, without missing any Ramadan, or every Ramadan, he did atikaf of the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. And in atikaf, he was trying to use the, all of his time in the dhikr of Allah, in the recitation of Quran, in the salah, and in the istighfar and these type of things. That was, of course, a teaching to the Ummah that this is how we need to spend these days of our life. We are getting into the most important days of our life. These are the most important days of our life. Let's just use them in a way that if this is the only opportunity we will get. Wallahu alam, if we are getting another opportunity or not. <coughs> Wallahu alam, what will be our situation in the coming years? Even if we get it, I don't know how the situation will be, if we will be able to use it or not. Wallahu alam, everything is in the hands of Allah. Let's use it as if this is the only opportunity of the life. And of course, we know that this is the most important time of our life that we will have. And that is a night where we can get the reward of the ibadah of more than 80 years, of more than 1,000 months. Another very important thing that we need to do during the month of Ramadan. Most of the people take their zakat out during the month of Ramadan. And some who don't take it out during the month of Ramadan, then they never take their zakat out. Zakat is fard in Islam. It's one of the pillars of Islam. And if you look into the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he orders us for salah, at the same time he orders us for zakat. Aqeemu salata wa atu zakat. Aqeemu salata wa atu zakat is repeatedly mentioned in the Quran. Zakah purifies our world. We are not doing any favor to any person by giving that zakah out. We are only doing favor to our souls by purifying our world. Because all of this wealth that comes to us, it comes with a lot of evils of it. As the zakah is paid out of it, all of that thing is clean and pure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being so kind and so merciful to us that only by spending this little amount of zakah, he says, all of your wealth is purified now. The rest of it that you have is clean and pure. Say if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have said, each time you use something, you have to give some of it, half of it out, in order for the other half to be clean and pure for you. You buy food. Each time you buy, you have to buy double the amount than what you need, because you spend half of it out, so that the other half will be clean and pure for you. You buy a car, you buy two, give one out and one for your soul, so this car is clean and pure for you to use. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being so merciful. That is said only two and a half percent of your yearly savings. Only two and a half percent. We give two dollars, fifty cents out of hundred dollars that we have. 
it's fard, it's faridah, it's one of the pillars of Islam without which our Islam cannot stand on its foundation, has no foundation to stand on. Without it, none of other ibadahs have any foundation to stand on because our Islam has no pillars. Our Iman has no pillars. These are the pillars of Islam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, a person who tries to save money without paying the zakah on it, on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put this coin, this money into the form of coins, gold coins, and this gold will be burned into the hellfire. And then, before the judgment starts, this is before this person will, is decided where this person is going, and just as people are waiting for the judgment, and the sun only a fist away from their head, at that time, these people will have those gold coins placed on their bodies, and they will be so hot as it is placed on top of his chest. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, it keeps on burning the whole body and will come out of that person's back. And continuously those coins will be placed on his body, and the person will be told that this is your wealth that you are trying to save without paying the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right for it, from it. Without paying your zakah from it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, people who try to save another world, this is about money that we save, other than money, all the other things that we save, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, if the person, if the person have not paid the zakah for it, it will come into the form of a snake on the day of judgment. And before the judgment will start, those snakes will be tied around this person's body and keep on biting this person. And of course, at that time, he will know his destination because the snake is around him. He cannot take the snake with him to the Jannah. This is, of course, about zakah. But alhamdulillah, most of us are paying our zakah. We need to get two steps ahead of zakah. Many of us might be one step ahead of zakah. And that is we pay charity. We pay sadaqat. We pay donations, walhamdulillah. We give and we keep on giving, walhamdulillah. Of course, during the month of Ramadan, whatever we give, in any cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever we give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and wherever we give, no limitations to this. We don't want to put no limitations. Give and keep on giving. Whatever we do, inshallah, it has so much reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advises us in Quran about infaq, about spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are so many ayahs in Quran al-Kareem. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of the ayahs says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, anfiqu mimma razakna, razakhnakum, min qabli an yatiya yawmun la bay'un fihi wa la khullatun wa la shafa'a. Spend, or you who believe, keep on spending before a day will come when a friendship will not help. You cannot buy and sell anything on that day. So you can buy some reward from people. When I shifa, no intercession will happen, well, of course, without the permission of Allah. So we can't depend on that either. All what we can we, we do for our souls, get some reward from here. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us one of the best ways of protecting our souls against the hellfire is charity. In faq fi sabilillah. And especially the charity of Ramadan. We can't even calculate the reward of it. I don't want to mention any numbers of it. We can never calculate. We can never figure out what is you are getting for each and every penny that you spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such a tremendous reward that if we just look at the reward of it, each and every person will feel that I want to give up everything and start a new life by my, for myself. But of course we can't do that either. And I'm sure we won't do it, so I won't have to talk too much about that one. At this time, we need to talk about giving and about spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and giving out for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized so much on this charity that he said to Sahaba Ridwan Allahi alayhi wa sallam, اِتَّقُ النَّارِ وَلَوْ بِشِقِّ تَمْرَةِ Protect yourself against the hellfire even if it is by spending half a date. A person only has one date. This is all that he owns in his life. One date. That he needs to eat. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, protect yourself against the hellfire, even if you can do it by spending half of this one date that you have. Walau bishakti tamra. Even if it is by spending half of the state.
This is only one step ahead of our zakat. The second step is being generous. Being generous at the time of giving. Having generosity is one of our qualities. And what does generosity mean? I'm sure many of us may think we are generous. But when we look at the ahadith, I would say we are one step ahead of zakat. That is, alhamdulillah, we give. And we might give a lot also. I'm not saying we give less. But generosity is totally different. Being very generous is totally different. When we look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at the Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi wa jma'een, and at the Ummah, how they were generous and what does what did generosity mean to those people? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once, he had only one pair of clothes that was torn up and he needed another one. So Sahabiyya, Sahaba of course went home, they talked to their families, and one of the Sahabiyya made a new dress for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He took the old one out, it wasn't really worthy of wearing the other one. So now he put the new one on, and this is the only dress that he has. A Sahabi comes, he sees the dress of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has new dress. He says, Ya Rasulullah, you have such a nice dress on you. Can you give it to me, Ya Rasulullah? Can you give it to me, Ya Rasulullah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, okay. When the gathering was over, he went home, he puts the same old dress on, and he gives the new one to the Sahabi. Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi wa the Sahabi who narrates this hadith, he says, it was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's habit that he would never refuse anything that he's asked for. You ask him for anything he wa you want. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not refuse it to the extent once a sahabi came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a poor man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, I'm in desperate need, my children are starving. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent, I think it was Usama radiallahu anhu, or one of the sahaba to his home, go and ask Aisha, do we have any food to offer this person because he's, he's in need of some food? She went, uh, the Sahabi one, he asked Aisha radiallahu anha, Aisha radiallahu anha replied, Ya Rasulullah, we don't have anything even for ourselves tonight, not even a single date. Tonight we are going to just have some glass of water and that's it. That's all we have for ourselves. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent the Sahabi to the next of his wives. And that Sahabi says, I went to nine of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's home. And the same reply I got from all of them, for tonight we only have a glass of water. Umar radiallahu anhu was sitting there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now we are looking at generosity. What does it mean? Umar radiallahu anhu says, Rasulullah, I, 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 I said to myself, this is the only time when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will have to tell someone that I don't have anything to give you. I'm sorry. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, Umar, go to that sahabi and he named the sahabi and get some loan for me. And when I brought it, he gave it to the sahabi and I, he said, this is all I can afford at this time. He's apologizing to that Sahabi, to that poor man, that this is all I can afford. He's taking loan for him. And he gave it to him, and then he apologized to him, and he sent him back. Umar radiallahu anhu said, when that person left, I said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, Allah never ordered you to some, do something like this. You put yourself into that situation. Now you will have to pay this loan back. And you took so much, you could have taken little food from them. Ya Rasulullah, taking all of this cash from them and giving it to this poor Sahabi, this poor person, you could have given him some food. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if I had it, I would have given him that food if I had. But since I didn't have the food, then I would give him as much as I can. And that is the amount that I thought I can borrow from this person. Therefore, I borrowed this amount and I gave it to the Sahabi. This is generosity. That when, even when he doesn't have it, he's taking long to give it to others. So we need to, inshallah, get a step ahead of that. There are so many instances we can talk about. Simply, I'm sure you all can remember Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu spending each and everything he had at his home. Asked by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did you leave for your family of Abu Bakr? He says the name of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Other than that, not a single plate, not a single blanket, nothing is left in my home. Oh Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, I have given everything out in the path, in the face of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to be generous and to spend as much as we can in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and use this opportunity to save ourselves 
in the Akhirah from the punishments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi wa ta'ala.